So I'm starting with the planet now using my soft pastels and the little square sticks you see me using, little oblong ones, they are the um, the Faber-Castell brand. Now they come in creative and professional. The creative ones are more of the student brand, a little bit cheaper as well as you'd expect. So I'm looking at my reference a lot, trying to get the colors in there that I need. Obviously I can adjust them with another layer, but I want to get the base ones in first. And I'm going to do this, you know, fairly slowly, but I'm going to speed the video up just a little bit so you can see this going in. Because all I'm going to do is layer colors down exactly as you see it now, and then blend slightly with my finger. And then I'll slow it back down when I've got a little bit more of this actually done. So you can see I'm being quite careful around the edge. So I've speeded it up a bit now so you can see it all blocking in. Nothing complicated, it's just, you know, just going for it really. I'm just looking again, you know, I'm looking at the reference, I'm seeing purple so I'm putting them in. There's no set uh, routine that I'm doing other than mostly going with the darker tones first and then the lighter tones on top as I usually do with oils and pastels. So know it's all going to blend, it's all going to merge together. So more concerned about the tones and getting the colours in there than anything else at this stage. I don't want to go with the very, very lights yet. As always, I'm saving those till last. When I need more control, I come in with the pencils. And then all that's left to do is to blend it all together with the finger. Nice and easy with the pastel matte paper, but the good thing with pastel matte, it doesn't just wipe off then and blend away. That's why you've got to have a surface that's got some sort of tooth to it. Otherwise it just blends away and everything merges into a muddy mess and uh, doesn't look great at all. So zoomed right in now and with the under layer blocked in on the planet I'm going to come back in start to re-establish some of these lighter passages and add some more layers to it refine the colors a bit more and also start to layer on top the details. So quite a steady hand needed for that blend in a little bit I want a soft light source appearance on it and when I need even more detail and more control I come back in with a pencil so I'm just toning that edge just a little bit of pink I should you know fade down into the more vibrant colors rather than it be a cut off from white to then go into that pink So continuing with those little Faber-Castell pastels, they're really nice and soft, great for the under layers and creating those smooth uh, transitions. So taking advantage now of, you know, the real bonus of using pastels, how easy it is to overlay and to put multiple colors on, on top of each other underneath. You can push hard and get, you know, real vibrancy or go soft and just get a touch of the color on a little hint, which is, you know, pretty much impossible, I think, in any other medium to do as easily as this. So you can see that made that area much more vibrant and standing out from that background. Just a very light touch then, just to soften it slightly. Now it's important when you're doing these lighter areas, keep your hands clean. I've got a microfiber cloth by the side of me that I'm wiping my fingers on every now and again. 
So I'm just going to continue now building up the layers on this uh, planet. So continuing to refine, seeing the colour, you know, as it changes on the reference, a little bit here and there, perhaps I want a little bit of purple here and there, there's no point at all giving you any colour formulas, you can see how many different, you know, types of colours I'm putting on and in various places as well. But I want to make sure that I got, you know, the lights and the darks in the right place. So the base layer is all blended nicely and I can come in now, refine even more. Karen Dash white pencil, it goes a little bit whiter than most of the other pencils, but it's soft. And that's why you don't see me use this a lot in detailed wildlife art, because when they're soft, they, you know, they're more likely to blend away. And when you're doing animals, fur, and that type of thing, you don't usually want um, to be blending it away to nothing. So not using a pencil, but using that little stick there instead, just because it's the right colour. I didn't really have a, a nice vibrant pink like that in my pencil sets. So I was fortunate to add it in that uh, Faber-Castell set. Just a really, really, really light touch over the surface. I don't want to obliterate all that underwork. And it even looks nice with not being blended at all. But I will do a little bit of blend, just very, very lightly with my finger, skipping over the surface. So starting to add the upper layers now of the planet's surface or the little clouds that's on the surface and more the details. So I've switched over a lot more now to the um, Conti sticks. They're a bit firmer so they give me more of a sharper edge. I could have done the pencils as well if I wanted. You can see how easy it is to layer that on. So if I want to make a real distinct mark obviously I'm pushing harder and perhaps using a sharp edge. Of the stick. If I want it more diffuse, I just use it really lightly or blend just with the finger, perhaps a tap with the finger here and there, or if I want to blend it more, you know, do that rounded motion I normally do. But you can see how laying that on top doesn't obliterate those underlayers, you can still just see them through it, so it does look like the, the clouds or, or whatever it is, the gases on the surface of the planet are sitting on top of the pink and blue and purpley areas.
not letting my hand touch the surface of the pastel paper. You can see sometimes I'll turn that stick around to get more of a sharper edge. There's a point to it so I can make a real distinct mark. And so you can make lots of little lines as well with these sticks. Obviously you can sharpen them a lot more. You may have seen in my other videos. Use just some uh, glass paper or sandpaper just to sharpen it, either to a chiseled edge or you can even make it um, really sharp like a, a pencil top on there just by twirling it on the sandpaper. So what I'll do now, I'll just carry on this technique using some uh, slightly different colours here and there perhaps as well and see how, see how this uh, turns out. So it's really starting to come alive now with details. So it's making the background obviously look further away because there's less details in that, you know, that cloudy, misty sky. More details then in this um, planet. And obviously I'll have more details again then on the leopard. And they'll be really hard edged and dark. So that'll bring the leopard forward, at, you know, a stage from the actual planet in the background. So there's multiple layers of depth and that's what makes a good drawing and piece of art usually. So just increasing that, you know, that like atmospheric look, which will help with the glow around there. Making sure I'm not touching the um, paper with my hand now, so I've got that marl stick. That's just allowing me to uh, stay off the surface. And see little things like this, look how that's made a, a real big difference. It's really giving that effect of the glow on the brightest part of the planet. 
I come in and make it a bit even more vivid, push in a bit harder. Better to do it a few times than to go too hard straight off because it's difficult to rectify that. Whereas to make it just a bit more prominent, I can just go over it again. See, once it's blended, then got that nice soft glow. I really enjoyed doing this drawing as I've said it is much different but it's something that I've wanted to do for many many years but um, I didn't think I could do it in oils and I didn't want to be doing airbrush and that would be the way to to go with it really to to use airbrush on it and it wasn't until I started doing pastels and I had a few you know normal type of pastels under my belt that I thought this could actually work with these vibrant colours with the um, soft pastels as well and that I knew that it would blend easily and I thought it could get the effect that I wanted so I'm really happy with the way it's turned out and it's opened up you know a new genre for me as well so I can start to look at these um, you know surreal drawings I'm not going to be doing them all the time for sure I still have my realism but it's something I'd like to experiment with a bit more in the future and see where I can push you know the boundaries a little bit more in the uh, wildlife art type of field So just I'm putting in the final touches. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Very, very different from anything else I've done. Lots and lots of vibrant colours. So hopefully it's shown you some new techniques and uh, tips on there as well. And um, I'm glad that I've gone, you know, quite realistic then on the leopard, putting in the spots. It makes this, this a bit different from lots of these... Uh, kind of galaxy and planet drawings you see with just a silhouette. I wanted to put in the extra work, that extra hour or two's worth of work and I think that really lifts the drawing. Because I, I do love uh, to put, you know, to keep my drawings and paintings realistic. I love the realism, even when they got, you know, a surreal type of uh, scene and planet such as this. You can still make it look quite real. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Plenty of other videos on my websites, on my Patreon and on my YouTube channels as well for you to enjoy. And I hope to see you all again real soon with the next videos. If you're looking for even more great art sources, I've really got you covered. First off, I've got a Patreon channel. It's been going well over a year or so packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month. Lots of the videos are uh, many hours long, so you can see they're really, really in-depth. Subjects such as um, turtles, birds, elephants, big cats, you name it, it's on there. So that's my Patreon channel. And also on that Patreon channel, before I go on to something else, I've got a secret Facebook group. So only the members are actually on there. It's the most supportive and friendly Facebook group that I've ever seen. I know I'm biased, but it really is. We've got uh, four or 500 members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus that comes free with it. Also you get line art every month as well. And we've just designed a brand new companion website for it. So if you've joined other Patreons, and uh, channels and you found it very very difficult to navigate around we got this free website that comes with it 
all the videos are now just a single click away. Couldn't be any easier than it is. I've also got my site, jasonmorgan.co.uk. Lots of tutorial videos, DVD discs and downloads on there. And if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects, I've got some of those too. I've got 900 plus on my website, wildlifeart-online.com and they will be copyright free for you so you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever. So hope you like those extra resources and I'll see you all again real soon.